Hello and welcome. My name is Gwen Strong and I'm here from the um, alumnix office and I'm very thrilled that we were able to be part of Latin Fest this morning to open the program and, um, and very thrilled to introduce what we hope will be the first in a series of um, international um, alumni talking about their work and art. But with no further ado, um, it's my great pleasure to introduce Patricia Gonzalez, who will tell you just a little bit more about our international connections at CalArts. Patricia? Thank you so much, Gwen, and, and uh, thanks to all of you for joining us today. So I'm Patricia Gonzalez, Executive Director for International and Community Partnerships. I'm so happy to welcome all of you and to introduce this program. And as Gwen said, it's really wonderful that this first international alumni event is part of Latin Fest, bringing together current and former CalArtians. Um, this is the first in a series of um, events that the alumni office is presenting to highlight the international scope of the lives and careers of CalArts alumni. Um, so we're really delighted that Valentina Pelayo Atilano accepted the invitation to curate this first presentation um, and conversation, and that she has selected Naomi Uman to open the series with. Valentina and Naomi attended the School of Film Video at different times, and though they hadn't met before this, they share a deep connection to Mexico, as well as an international dimension to their lives and work. Um, their paths also encapsulate in, uh, some shared aspects of the CalArts experience, such as dissolving boundaries across disciplines, geography, and culture, and also engaging in a rigorous creative practice within a context of ongoing mutual support, building community while at CalArts and beyond. Um, so I'd like to welcome them and you and briefly introduce them. Um, you'll find fuller bios um, in the chat. So very briefly, Valentina Pelayo Atilano was born in Mexico City and grew up in LA. She has lived and worked in Mexico City, Los Angeles, London, Spain, and is currently based in Portugal. Um, her creative practice intersects painting, installation, film, and the curatorial practice that includes screenings of work by CalArts faculty and alum, at uh, Cineteca Nacional in Mexico City. She studied at Central St. Martins in London, graduated with a BFA um, in film video um, at, from CalArts in 2016, and went on to complete an MA in cultural theory and criticism in 2017. Naomi Uman received her MFA in live action from CalArts Film Video in 1998. She is an extraordinary experimental artist creating work in a variety of mediums. She has lived and worked in Mexico for many years. Naomi's experimental animation and documentary films have been shown nationally and internationally in many prestigious film festivals and museums. She teaches at the Fine Arts Museum in Mexico City. So thank you so much, Valentina, for curating this program and Naomi for accepting this invitation. So um, to get us started, Valentina, um, I wonder if you would please speak about why you chose Naomi um, for the screening and, and dialogue. Hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, I want to thank CalArts. This is an honor. And of course, I want to thank Naomi for accepting this. Um, well, Naomi, you know, not only is her life so interesting, but her work is very diverse and very dynamic, as we, we're going to see for the people that have never seen her work. But I also picked her because in a way we're living in these very strange times that um, somehow have taught us how to be more creative with our resources. And I think Naomi is a perfect example for that. She's an independent filmmaker and, um, and more, you know, what else to see in amazing cinema in these times? And also because um, I think it's very important to see works of female experimental um, filmmakers and um, 
what better than Naomi? That's part of this community. And it's important to have access to see her work. That's why I picked her. <laughs> Thank you, Naomi, for accepting. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> We're going to watch three films uh, in, in the first minute of the presentation. The first is Boom, Boom, Boom. The second is Ricardo Nikolaevsky, a portrait of uh, Naomi made by him. And the third is Calendar. Then we're gonna have a quick conversation and then watch Leche. And then we're gonna have time for discussion. Gordon, please, boom, boom, boom. Eso es mi vestido preferido. se sienta mejor. Vayan por Pepto Bismol. Jimena. ¿Pero qué le pa qué comieron? Mm. Tacos de carnitas. Ay, qué horror. 
te lo juro que siento que Rona es mi ángel de la guardia. Ay, qué bien. O que me está como vigilando. Y sabes que el, el, el H en ruso es un N, ¿no? Sí. Sí, sí. Um, so I was, I'm in the bathtub, I was just in the bathtub thinking, uh, preparing for Ricardo Nikolayevsky. He's um, coming to make a portrait of me, which I'm very excited about. And I was going to ask him to make my entry for today. And then I realized, um, He barely knows me. So I'm making my own portrait.
Great. So Naomi, I think this first three films somehow go very well together, you know, like um, Boom 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 somehow reflects on your sewing practice, you know, your stitching handmade practice. And then we go into uh, your friends and collaborator Ricardo Nikolayevsky's uh, portrait, which actually portrays you with your handicraft practice. And then we go to calendar, which is, you know, your Ukrainian period. And yes, it's like a small piece of fabric. And um, I, would, I was wondering if you'd like to introduce, say, Leche, and then we can discuss farther on this idea in the longer discussion. Sure, I'd be happy to. You want me to talk about Leche? No, if you want, just introduce it, and then we can talk about everything together, including Leche at the end of Leche. Okay, I'm, I was so happy to see Ricardo's film. Um, I haven't seen it in a long time and haven't seen myself from that time in a long time. So it actually was quite emotional for me to watch that. Um, and also to remember that there's a piece of a unfinished work of mine in there uh, from my video diary project, which um, anyhow, um, so yeah, so, you know, Leche is, was my thesis film at CalArts um, where I had just sort of life altering experience uh, finally finding my people and my community at CalArts. And, um, and yeah, Leche is a film where I was supposed to make my thesis film about something completely different. And I had taken time off from school. I had the camera and all the material and I was planning to head to Mexico anyhow to make a film with my then mother-in-law. And then my marriage fell apart and I had to kind of change, change gears. And along the way, I stopped at the ranch that is in Leche. And when I heard the sound of the milk hitting the buckets, um, I realized that there, there was a film there and asked if I could come back and spend time with them. And um, yeah, and to this day, I, I still spend time with that family. They're kind of my family here in Mexico. And the idyllic life that is portrayed in Leche is, um, definitely, definitely no longer exist. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. Portraying things are disappearing, you know? Yeah. But anyways, um, it's what Leche Gordon filmed in Aguascalientes. <laughs> in Aguascalientes. And it's a film with, made with, with mucho amor. And um, actually, Grandma Altagracia just died recently. So it's also quite emotional for me to watch that film as well. So um, I look forward to talking to you afterward. Of course. Thank you so much, Naomi and Gordon. Please, you're, you're so kind, Leche. Thank you.
me gusta cantar. Oye, sí me gusta cantar. Yo te le digo, le digo no. Tú le digo. Ajá, ey. A ver. De. Canto primerito. Bueno, la Teodorita, le da un pedacito aunque sea ahí. Roberto Buciño le dice a Teodora, respeta el cariño que traigo pistola, la traigo con ocho tiros. Y va No, mira, te, te iba a contar que cuando yo estaba mmm, muy chica, no más no recuerdo qué edad tenía, pues estaba chica. Una vez José Luis, mi hermano, llegó de, del trabajo y ya se arregló y luego dijo que iba a ir al cine. Y quién sabe a mí qué se me figuraría que era el de un cine, ¿verdad? Entonces le dije, llévame. Y luego... Pero como él es tan buena gente que nunca sabe decir que no, dijo, sí, vamos. Y me llevó, dijo, pero no te vayas a asustar. No, no me asusto. Ya llegamos y ya estaba ahí la gente apenas llegando, ¿verdad? Entramos, nos acomodamos hacia el frente, hacia el fondo, ¿verdad? Cuando de rep ya estaba la manta puesta en la pared y todo, y lo cuando de repente que veo que salen unos charrazos de a caballo, con, uno, con unos caballotes grandotes y, y un atajón de ganado. A grit y grit y iban derechito donde yo estaba. Dije, mmm, paz y los espero, yo corro. Y eché carrera de ahí en eso, Pepe, mi hermano José Luis. Pronto se levantó y fue y me agarró, porque si no, yo todavía iría corriendo. Porque los vi y a tiro bien cerquitas. Por... Yo estaba viendo y no veía nada. Y de repente que salen... No, dije, yo corro, no los espero. Ay, no.
Her name is Alta Gracia. That means high grace. Her husband is Asuncion. We all call him Papachon. Se llama Alta Gracia. Esto quiere decir Alta Gracia. Su marido es Asunción. Todos le llamamos Don John o Papachón. Esto es Efren. Papachón le ordenó no jinetear. Cuando lo estaba haciendo, un becerro le tumbó. Al caerse en los tubos de metal del coral, se rompió su diente enfrente. No podía sonreír durante toda una semana. Se tapaba la boca con su mano para comer. Al final, Dijo a su abuelo que se había caído de la bicicleta. Podía regresar a comer con nosotros. One day I was filming at Roberto's house. Gilberto came out dressed in his charro gear, chaps, fancy hat, piteado belt, boots. He turned to me and he said, I'm ready. I didn't know what he was ready for. Finally, I realized he wanted me to film him floreando, working his fancy lasso moves. Roberto trabaja todo el día en caballo. Está siempre armado.
Laura takes the cheese into town on Thursdays. She's the only person on the ranch who knows how to drive. They charge about 32 pesos a kilo for the cheese, which she sells door to door to her usual customers. That works out to about $2 a pound. There are 25 cows that they milk every day. The amount of milk that a cow gives depends on how much it has to eat, and that depends on how much it has rained. This has been a very dry year. A es por Asunción. R es por Ramiro, su hijo. A is for Asunción. R is for Ramiro, his son. La mula, la criatura más noble del rancho. Un día decidió tumbarme dos veces. Nunca lo entendía. Blanca makes all the tortillas every day. They're thick and fat and delicious. The wood fire gives them a special taste. They're so delicious, sometimes we just eat them with salt. Blanca is called the tractor because she's stronger than any man on the ranch. This is a friend. Grandpa told him not to go riding the bulls, but he did anyway. He got thrown into the metal bars of the corral and broke his front tooth. He couldn't smile for a week. 
He couldn't eat it in the kitchen with the rest of us, and he had to keep his hand over his mouth. Finally, he told Grandpa that he'd fallen off of his bicycle. Then we could all eat together. Roberto Matón Jabalí es un vaquero verdadero. La mula, the gentlest creature on the ranch, one day she decided to throw me twice. I couldn't figure that out. Roberto killed a wild boar. He's a real cowboy. Roberto says, Si me mochas el pelo, te mocho un dedo. That means, if you fuck up my hair, I'll blow off your toes. And Raquel just laughs. Roberto works all day in the saddle. He always carries a loaded gun.
A Blanca le llamamos el tractor porque es más fuerte que todos los hombres del rancho. Un día estaba filmando en casa de Roberto. Gilberto salió vestido de charro, cinta piteada, sombrero, botas. Me dijo, estoy listo. Yo no sabía para qué estaba listo. Finalmente me ocurrió que quería que le filmara floreando, haciendo sus pasos con el lazo, con la ariata. Laura entrega el queso en jueves. Es la única que sabe conducir. Todos quieren ir a comprar dulces. Ella va de puerta en puerta vendiendo el queso a los compradores de siempre. La cantidad de leche que dan las vacas depende de la cantidad de zacate. Y eso depende de la cantidad de lluvia. Este año ha sido muy seco. Blanca hace todas las tortillas, todos los días. Están gruesas y riquísimas. Tienen un sabor especial del comal de leña. A veces las comemos con puro sal. La Chalupa has been at the ranch for 25 years. Now she's going to market. She has no teeth left.
That was great. Um, Patricia would like to say something before we start the discussion. Please. Oh, well, maybe it's not even like before you start the discussion, but maybe part of it, you know, it's. Uh, I was yes, just, as a starting point, <laughs> as a starting point. I was very moved by your films um, and I don't even know where to start kind of asking, but um, because there were so many thoughts. Um, as I was watching, but um, one of the things that struck me was your relationship to place and community and to the handmaid and getting really close, like Leche so many close-ups and so much of a feeling of intimacy. The same with calendar, you know, and, and it, you know, so I was wanting to ask you about this and, and the sort of links that you see with, you know, the, the land of your ancestors with you, the Ukrainian context of calendar and the passage of time and change and then you mentioned how you know and your connection to Mexico and and this family who has become your family and how that has changed as well so many many things and you know and then I'm seeing like the embroidery and your your handmade embroidery practice as well so just to to get things some some thoughts going there yeah those are some big big themes <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I, my, I don't make a lot of work actually. And um, I think part of that is just because really I only make something when I'm profoundly inspired or I'm getting to know, wanting to have an adventure and getting to know another world. And I really immerse myself in that world. So it takes me a long time to make anything. Um, <laughs> But yeah, all, all of those are themes in my work. Uh, the handmade and, um, you know, growing things, making things, cooking. Um, those are all sort of part of the same trajectory for me in my life. I continue, continue to be. Yeah. <laughs> Did I answer that? <laughs> yes. Now that uh, Patricia brought that up, I think it ties very well to this idea that I feel that it's very present in your work. That is a, a reaction to how you place yourself when you move to a new country and you move to a new culture and you have to learn a new language. And I think this vulnerability has fed, you know, part of your body of work in general and I think that's fascinating because I think people are crazy when they move to new places I mean I've done it and it's like being far from your roots from your family you know from but it somehow changes your perspective and feeds to your work and so I, I was wondering if you can expand on that and yes that would be great yeah, well, when I when I go to a new place, or even when I go to Aguascalientes, which well at one point was a new place, it's really important for me to go alone, and to not work with the crew, and to uh, you know often not understand the language, the customs, and really make myself small, um, make myself childlike. I'm often reduced to a child because of my language inability, or and and. I feel in that way people aren't are open more open to me and especially the women in the community I feel generally um, and and I feel like by letting them know that to me they are my teachers in a way and that I want to learn from them and and portray what I'm learning in whatever film I'm 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 making I'm working on so it's definitely part of my part of my way of, of being in the world in general. Yes, because I find that um, community is very important to you, you know, and, um, and that relationship you have with your subjects, somehow I think it's fascinating how you give them power in a way, you know, it's like a dialogue and um, going to this, like power, I was wondering how you think um, they specifically somehow feed your work. Does that make sense? Like, how do you give them power? 
specifically do you feel? Well, for example, in Leche, I I lived with him for a really long time before I even took the camera out of the out of the case. And um, you know, for example, like I would work, you know, I would try in a way to be helpful, you know, just like try to be a good guest, basically. And you know, like I learned how to milk a cow. I had to, I wore acrylic fingernails at the time and I had to cut off my fingernails in order to be able to milk a cow. And Blanca was amazed that someone with these glamorous long fingernails would cut them off in order to learn something that she found to be, you know, a tedious chore. Um, so in that way, like just shifted a little bit the balance of what was important and um yeah that was just one one particular moment where where that happened it was really clear but for example um i'm working on a project from albania and one of the one of the resultant works of that that journey is a video project where you see where the villagers themselves are talking about the camera or telling me where to put the camera or one, you know, maraviando, how do you say that? Um, uh, <laughs> how do you say that? You know, wondering over, wow, what is this thing? Um, so in, in, that, in that particular project, again, I'm trying to give them voice in some way or give them some kind of agency in the project. And now on a wider scope, there's also an encounter and taking place constantly in your work with nature, uh, with the living landscape, with the animal and the microcosmos of the vegetable world, you know, I mean, the vegetable, like, you know, el campo, <laughs> the countryside, yes. You. So how does your creative process relate to this ecology of each place? How do you, beyond the presence of humans, I'm very curious to how you immerse yourself with the setting in, in the natural aspect to let that influence you and be part of how you film. Does that make sense? Like naturally part of your body and how you film. Um, yeah, I mean, well, I spend a long, long time periods wherever I'm working, whether it be, you know, on an animated film or, or a documentary or you know, whatever it is that I'm working on. And I, I guess I just try to absorb the place in a way. And, and for example, you know, in Albania, it was really cold and really mountainous, you know, and I had the heavy camera. So that sort of dictated what I filmed and where it was also really slippery, you know. Um, also, yeah, in, in, in all of my work, I don't really use artificial lighting. So I need to be filming in places either out, out of doors or places that are really have good, good lighting. So in Leche, you don't really see any of the interiors because the adobe houses don't have great illumination. Um, yeah, so, so I think the, definitely the place influences the work in a lot in so many ways. Um, and in particular in Calendar, where the whole point of the film is that uh, language isn't only something that you hear and read and see, but it's also something that relates to nature and what's happening in nature uh, and how we name, you know, how we name the months of the year, depending on what's happening in nature. Yes, like going back to this idea, um, on one hand, you have carried out a nomadic life, immersing yourself in diverse communities, and as we said, adapting to new places and language, which also transmits a sense of alienation in your work. But on the other hand, I feel that uh, it seems that you are drawn into the, those rooted in a particular place, in a particular culture and language, like Albania, Aguascalientes. And I feel like this, this these are opposite poles and um, they somehow dialogue with each other. And I'm wondering about how in this meeting point, in this liminal place, what does that attract? What do you see in this meeting place? And how does this like influence your overall process and work? 
So I'm not sure if this exactly is gonna answer the question, but I think that I, I have always enjoyed the feeling of being the other in some way. And so when I put myself in a foreign place or in a foreign community, um, I don't know, it's kind of this discomfort is comfortable for me. The sense of like exploring and learning and like everything's new and everything's like wonderful. Yeah, the sense of awe and wonder that I have when I don't really understand what's happening around me and I don't fit in. Um, I kind of, I like that, that, that to be in that space. Um, in Ukraine, it was really over the top. You know, the xenophobia there was very intense. And I, you know, at the end, I think that was part of the reason I couldn't stay there any longer. But um, for example, in, in, in Albania, they have this tradition of, of taking care of the guest. It's just like, just make you feel incredibly welcome and um, safe. And so, you know, like that being in that place where you feel safe, but yet everything's so totally foreign. Um, I find that really an exciting place to be. It's funny. Do you feel like you choose this people or they choose you somehow? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, ding. Um, but okay, like changing the subject a bit, I feel like your work, your most recent boom, 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 you know, it's an, uh, I've, I'm, it's an, a found footage film, correct? And how do you feel like it, it relates to your like old, old films, your first films, like Love for Three Oranges and The Famous Removed, for example? Well, um, you know, it's literally it's in a way found footage. I don't have any idea where that piece of cartoon footage came from or how it came into my possession. Um, and that actually was the result of a really interesting residency here in Mexico City. Um, the government has a big film studio called Churubusco and they have their own film laboratory and which is you know falling into disuse because so few people are, are shooting analog film. So I belong to a collective here uh, and we proposed to occupy the lab as a creative space and to make films with the lab employees uh, so that they could for the first time experiment this medium that had been a job for them as a, as a creative medium for themselves. And in the process also, we each made a film at the lab, at the lab during our residency. So that's, that's what that came from. And, you know, the idea behind it really is just that the whole, the world is going to hell in a handbasket and we're all sort of laughing. I mean, that was, you know, Trump had just been elected and it, you know, it was just like, felt like really things were, it was the beginning of what, you know, I didn't realize was really how bad it was going to get, but it just felt that you know, it was kind of like fuck the world and ha 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 he he he. Um, that was sort of the idea behind that film. Patricia? Well, I'm just very impressed with your, you know, the, the, your approach, you know, that, that kind of humility that you have in, in um, joining a community and how much, you know, power, power there is in that. Um, and, and the freedom that you find in that otherness that you described. So I just wanted to, to share how inspiring I find that. Um, and yeah, I think now people are coming on and they probably have really good questions. So looking forward to that, but thank you. This was a great, I love the films and it was really great um, listening to you talking about them. And I'm looking forward to the, to the questions. Yeah, that was wonderful, Naomi. Oh, thank yeah. you so much. So thank maybe you. a way to, to try and organize the questions would be maybe if people um, raise their, their uh, Zoom hand up and we can try and, or your actual hand, um, and we can try and, and go through that way. Um, let's see if anybody's got their hand up now. Uh, Hi, Miley. Hi, Naomi. 
Can I say, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to jump in. I got excited. Is that okay, Valentina and Pat Patricia? Can I? Sure. Okay. Riley, thank you so much, by the way, for your, um, mm. you know, help and feedback on this, making this program. Because I'm, like I'm so happy. Both. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much, Naomi. It's amazing to see you again. It's amazing to see your films again. I'm, I'm moved. Yes. My daughter wants to say hi quickly because she watched, she watched uh, some of the Leche. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> it was amazing. Um, <laughs> that's my daughter. What's up? Um, so I, I just, uh, I wanted to say, uh, uh, Naomi, I'm, I'm so good to see you again and hear you speak. And I'm always so moved by your films. And I was so happy to, to see some of the, like, I hadn't seen uh, the film made in the Ukraine calendar. And I'm, I feel like, um, there is uh, you you um, something that that always is like a thread with your work uh, through time. Um, is this whether 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 we know it or not, whether you say it or not? Um, and often, if we have a chance, uh, the gift of hearing you speak about your films, you'll often mention a personal story or or more, you know, involved with the film. You, there's always a, a feeling of the personal there um, that is really, it's, it's something the medium captures that it's not just visual. It's not just sound if there's sound. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's this intangible thing that I think um, a lot of artists and scholars are always trying to define and articulate and your work always has it. I always get very moved by this, this closeness. There's such um, life and texture. There's something so incredibly tactile. It's like a sensory ethnography. It really is. And um, this, this, this sense of where and what and who and and with there's always I think that's the thing about your 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 work there's always a sense of with there's no sense of hierarchy there's no sense of the camera being separate um, and I think I don't think I actually had a question I think I just wanted to share once again being amazed by that, I, I was watching Leche, I was transformed back to the Bijou, you know, once upon a time, seeing it for the first time um, and just being so, um, having that sense again. Um, and I also wanted to tell you that I still have my M bag. And so a long time ago, and you saw in the film that Ricardo made, Naomi would make these amazing bags that had the initial of the person she was making them for. And I still have my um, purple and pink and blue M bag and it still functions perfectly. So I just wanted to, to share that and to thank you and thank Valentina and Patricia. This has been amazing. <laughs> that was lovely. Thank you so much, <laughs> Miley. I, I still make those bags. <laughs> <laughs> I think Amanda has a question. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Naomi. It's so nice to see your face. Amazing. Oh, oh wait for me. You guys are <laughs> making me cry. <laughs> oh. Um. Okay. So my question. Um without going into a reunion rabbit hole, is um, before we saw the film today, you said that the um, life on the ranch was very different now than it was when you made the film in 1998. Could you talk for a bit about how that's changed? Oh, sure, yeah. Well, I don't know if I can talk about it without falling apart. Um, so yeah, so Julio, the boy with the, <laughs> The uh, the rope, uh, you know, he got involved with drugs, so he's in rehab, and um, 
Ramiro's kid also got involved with not just using drugs, but selling drugs and stealing cattle. Then he got kidnapped um, by the band that he had been working with. And then he got away from them and called, you know, told the police. And so then the band came after him. So there were sharpshooters around the ranch, if you can imagine. And uh, Blanca was prostituting herself to pay for drugs for her son. And now that, <laughs> yeah, it's really kind of pretty unbelievably crazy stuff. And it turns out that Altagracia, the grandmother, um, did not actually die of entirely natural causes. So there's currently a lawsuit against the doctor who came. Anyhow, yeah, so it's, it's just a lot of crazy stuff. And the doctor, I think I told you this, Valentino Coquito, the doctor who came and treated her and she died a half an hour later is now being accused of like killing all of these different people and having uh, kidnapped this young woman for 48 hours and held her as a sex slave. Um, yeah, like just, just like unbelievable stuff. Yeah, I should be filming. <laughs> so. <laughs> I, did that, it, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I've actually never stopped filming this family. Um, you know. Yeah, do you think there's another film there? Well, I've always been shooting on 16 millimeter film and I even, you know, in a grant proposal, I named the project, um, a friend of mine named Jody Mack proposed the name Tres Leches, which I made Leche, Mala Leche. So that, you know, so I've been filming them and, and you know, I will continue, but, you know, I don't know if I'll make anything with the material or not, um, but yeah. It's, it's quite a change. <laughs> like, and now that, the, you know, uh, Asuncion is in his 90s, so he's pretty much, you know, pretty much bedridden. And Blanca is no longer at, Blanca or Julio are not at the ranch anymore. Um, mm, it's gotta be really hard to watch. You know, it's just time. I mean, things change, we all. <laughs> we all change, <laughs> we grow up, grow older, um, fall into problems and then get out of them. So. <laughs> it looks like there's more questions. So nice to see you, Amanda. Nice to see you, Naomi. You have wonderful old photos of you. I'm going to send you later today. Oh, yay. <laughs> I think Eric has a question. Hi, Naomi. Hi. How you been? It's nice been a to see you. Uh, yeah longer than we both want to admit. Um, but I had a question, you kind of answered it. Um, you work in 16 millimeter and we just, we shared this love of film. So how is it continuing to work in that format when everything is digital now? I wanted to find out how you deal with that. Have you embraced it? Do you just stay with film? Well, I'm sort of working between formats now. I have, I'm shooting film and then scanning, editing digitally. I'm, and I would like to, to make film prints eventually, but the labs have been closed because of the pandemic. So I'm just sort of in a little bit of a holding pattern right now, but um, I did move my optical printer from Newhall down to Mexico City not too long ago. And, it's up and running and um, there's a lot of enthusiasm, enthusiasm for analog film here in Mexico City. It was never taught really very extensively, especially not with a hands-on approach. And um, so there's a small but very enthusiastic community of people down here that are thrilled to learn how well, to use it. I'm glad to hear that. And same thing here, but it's just, it's a small movement right now and hopefully it'll become bigger and uh, film will come back, hopefully. Yeah, so, <laughs> that's, I don't, you know, I don't know what the future holds, but. Um, exactly. Well, it's wonderful to see you again. Likewise, likewise, so nice to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Absolutely, when I saw it come up, I was like, I have to be there for her. Take care. <laughs>
Uh, hi, hi, Nomi. How are you? Very well, thank you. You're from coming from far away. Yeah. So I had like I have a question. It is, uh, how do you like from where or is it a particular person? Do you get inspiration for all your female characters? Like, uh, do you get in from a uh, uh, inspiration from a particular person or from like a place or like a character that you you know it's there in your mind or something? So where do you get inspiration for your female character? Well, I don't really have characters that I create. All of my characters exist in reality or, you know, already on the film or whatever. I don't ever like use actors or write a script or um, I don't have any pretense in, in any of the films that I make. I, I just, that's just not part of my way of working. I mean, my inspiration for my films in general always comes from an idea, you know, like uh, I was at a residency once uh, where, you know, we were given a camera and material and I didn't really have an idea. So I just filmed this one plant that I, I, I found visually interesting, but I put the material on a shelf because like, there was no idea there. And then I later learned that this particular plant happened to be the main food source for the monarch butterfly, which uh, migrate to Mexico. and. So then I was like, oh, there's an idea. Maybe I can make a film out of that and then employ that material in, in a film. And that's, that's generally the way that I work, where I have an idea and I go and I collect material toward that end and then I put it together and when things are missing, I can go and get more or, or but, but I don't oh, ever invent okay. anything out of whole cloth. Okay, and like one more, it's like a random question. How many tattoos do you have? It's kind of all one. I have an octopus that is, the head is on my back and the, the eight tentacles are sort of embracing me. And oh, I have a okay. small other one. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> nice meeting you. Nice meeting you too. So I guess, um, I'm gonna hand the word to Patricia to give all the thank yous to the people who made this possible. Uh, Patricia, leave it to you. Wait, first I would just like to thank you all so much for spending this time with me and my work and Valentina and Patricia and- oh, um, Thank you, Naomi. Gordon and Harmony and Gwen, I, I, this was just a great experience. It's so nice to see old friends and talk about my work. So thank you for this opportunity. Oh, and yeah, of course. I mean, thank you to Patricia again, Gordon, and Carolyn, so for all your patience, you know, because it was <laughs> patience and hard work and to Nuno Lisboa too, to make this happen because without his help and collaboration, this program would not have happened as well. And to everyone who came to the events. So thank you so much. I hope this is the beginning of something. You know? <laughs> I think it really is. And, and thank you both. And thank you, Naomi, for sharing your work and, and your creative process so generously with us. Okay. Um, it's really beautiful and inspiring. And I hope we can continue somehow this connection and, and develop it further. In, in and I think that more things will come of it, you know, because I think that's always how it starts, you know, that seed. But I loved you talking about the milkweed as well. Um, you know, the plant that the monarch butterflies. And, and there's another, you know, kind of connection of how one small thing, one place has that repercussion in a larger way. So, you know, and I think that these sorts of interactions that we have with each other have that same kind of potential. Um, so now before we, before I, close, you know, I wanted to also bring Emilia Moscoso Borja back because she was actually going to talk in the beginning about Latin Fest and how this event is actually um, opening up Latin Fest, which is a student initiated um, uh, annual event. So I'll let Emilia talk about it and then I'll come back and, you know, thank everyone again. So Emilia. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, hi, everybody. 
Uh, we are very, very happy to have started our festival with this amazing event. Thanks, Naomi. It was uh, beautiful to know and to check all your work here. And for us, uh, as part of the production team of the festival, we are super, super pleased to, to have you opening this, this journey. Uh, we also want to thank the CalArts community for making this collaboration possible. Thanks, Valentina, Patricia, and Gwen for hosting this event today. And uh, well, I want to invite you all to check the Latin Fest schedule. We have amazing guest artists uh, the whole week. We have also featuring a student work, a student galleries, music showcase, and more. We will have tomorrow at 1 p.m. an interview and discussion with the hour winning writer and playwright Migdalia Cruz on her career spanning over 30 years of achievements and follow up by the vis uh, visual arts and Afro-Latinx panel discussion with the artist Lily Bernard uh, addresses issues of sexism, racism, and trauma themes that are present in her artwork. All our events are open and we'll be very happy to see you there. I just wanted to, to talk a little bit about the Colors Lighting Fest that has been an, a student initiative and a student project we just started in 2018 and we are continue through the years. We really wanted to uh, make this event, you know, uh, la lo uh, last longer uh, through generations, hopefully. And this year is our first year in a virtual edition. And I really want to thank also the production team of this 2021 Latin Fest. All the production team members come from different schools around the Institute. And we have this year, Maya Paredes, David Velasco, Gemma Castro, Anaís Azul, Angel, Angela Rosado, y, and Julia Aguila. Thank you so much again. And please check uh, all the schedule. Yeah, I'm sure you will enjoy it. So thank you so much, Emilia. And Emilia has been one of the leading um, people in, in the Latin Fest and organizing Latin Fest for, for many years. So, um, so I want to thank um, Valentina and Naomi again, and also all of you who have participated, who attended and who asked such great questions. Um, I think it was a really wonderful conversation. Um, and I also want to take a moment to thank everybody else who made this possible. And, you know, we've all, already been mentioning some of them, but, um, you know, the CalArts Alumni Office, in particular, Harmony Frederick and Gwen Strong, Emilia, of course, Gordon Kurowski, who's made all the technical magic happen, uh, Liliana Santana and Cineteca Nacional in Mexico, uh, Nuno Lisboa, who, you know, Valentina has already mentioned, who's been an amazing partner, not only in this event, but also with uh, the Docs Kingdom Seminar every year in, in Portugal, and some of our faculty and students participate in that every year, including having screenings of their work, but also participating in this very rich discussion that happens there. Um, as well as, of course, Miley Colbert and Adriana Trujillo. And I definitely encourage you to, to attend all the Latin Fest events or as many as possible. As um, Emilia mentioned, the amazing full program is posted in the chat. It's really incredible. And I hope you will continue to participate in, in future alumni events like this one. Um, and again, a reminder that this event was recorded and it will be available in English, as well as translated to Spanish and distributed by CalArts and Cineteca Nacional. Um, so another wonderful partner uh, with CalArts over the years. So thank you also Cineteca. And just thank you all very, very much for joining us. It's been really a great, great way to spend uh, this morning with you. So thank you.